Good evening, my name is Deborah Walker and I'm speaking to you from Revival from Down Under, which is a Christian church located in the eastern suburbs of Melbourne in Australia. So I'd like to welcome everybody watching by YouTube and those with us tonight. Hallelujah. God's on the throne. He's on the throne and he's overseeing all things. And except the Lord build the house, the people labor in vain. So God's church is being built up by his word, by his spirit, and he's doing it. Why? And that's because he's going to get all the glory. Hallelujah. It's not a work of man. It's not a work of the arm of the flesh. It's something God's doing in the earth. And uh, we've all been called to be part of his mighty church. And uh, our best days are still ahead of us. So hallelujah. And tonight I'm just going to talk a bit about um, one of the keys that... Uh, will help us embrace all that God has for us. And um, no matter when we've started in God, we still need to continue on in God and just keep pressing in. And I've called this topic, Be Renewed in Your Mind. Be renewed in your mind. Mankind is made in the image of God, who is three. And um, we read in 1 John, let's turn to it. 1 John chapter 5, verse 7, reading from the King James Bible. It's good to read your Bible. It's good to, you know, you can have your phones, you can have your iPads, but to actually have the Word of God and get to know where those scriptures are. And, um, you know, you can color code your Bible. It just makes it come alive and it's um, really good. And when God quickens things, it's just alive. Hallelujah. First John chapter 5, verse 7. So I read, said, where mankind is made an image of God who is three. First John 5, verse 7, For there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. And these three are one. And we are created three, yet one. Let's turn to First Thessalonians chapter 5. Just laying a foundation here. First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 23. And it reads, and the very God of peace sanctify you wholly. And I pray God your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Spirit, soul and body. The word blameless means faultless. And Jesus has forgiven all our faults, all our shortcomings so that we can come before him boldly and blameless. Amen. And the Amplified reads, verse 23, And may the God of peace himself sanctify you through and through, separate you from profane things, make you pure and holy, consecrated to God, and may your spirit and soul and body be preserved sound and complete and found blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Messiah. So God is interested in all three areas of our lives, our spirit, our soul, and our body. God does not just desire our spirit to be saved, but also our soul and our body to be faultless and complete. Second Timothy chapter 3, verse 16. As a church, we know the scripture quite well. And it reads, all scripture is given by inspiration of God. So that's all scripture, not just the New Testament. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. The Amplified opens it more. Every scripture is God breathed. So it's God inspired. God inspired these men to write his, down his words. It's given by his inspiration and it's profitable for instruction, for reproof and conviction of sin, for correction of error and discipline in obedience and for training in righteousness, in holy living, in conformity to God's will, in thought, purpose and action. Hallelujah. So all scripture has been given to us to instruct us in God's right ways, in thought, purpose and and action. Hallelujah. God wants to inspire us to do all things according to his purpose, his thoughts, and what he would have us to do. Before we give our lives to the Lord, we are spiritually dead. However, once we are saved, our spirit comes alive. And then what are we to do? Once we were saved, 
Give our heart to the Lord. Our spirit comes alive. And then what? Romans 12 verse 1. It instructs us what to do. Romans chapter 12 verse 1. I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. The Amplified says, I appeal to you therefore, brethren, and beg of you in view of all the mercies of God to make a decisive dedication of your bodies, presenting all your members and faculties as a living sacrifice, wholly devoted, consecrated, and well-pleasing to God, which is your reasonable service, reasonable, rational, intelligent service, and spiritual worship. Hallelujah. So once our spirit is saved and we are offering ourselves to God as a living sacrifice, we serve him. And then what's the next step? Well, then begins the most exciting, wonderful journey as our relationship with God develops. Hallelujah. People are looking for life. Well, the true life is found in God. He wants us to have abundant life and we belong to him. We are his family and Jesus died that we can have life and life more abundantly. Let's read um, verse 2. And be not conformed to this world, but be you transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. The Amplified says, do not be conformed to this world, this age, fashioned after and adapted to its external superficial customs, but be transformed, changed by the entire renewal of your mind, by its new ideals and its new attitude, so that you may prove for yourselves what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God, even the thing which is good and acceptable and perfect in his sight for you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Mighty God. So firstly, where is our mind? Where is our mind? It's part of our soul and within our soul, we know we have the mind, the will and the emotions. And that word transformed, it means God wants to change us. And it's a metamorphosis. It's, for example, a caterpillar changing into a beautiful butterfly. That's what God is doing from the inside out. Hallelujah. And that renewing means to renovate. And the word renovate and some of us know about renovating our houses, means to repair, to restore to a good condition, to make new again. So no matter how we come to God, no matter what's gone down in our life, God wants to repair, restore to a good condition and to make new again. Hallelujah. That is God's plan. And for example, we understand the word renovate with regard to houses. And when a house needs to be renovated, some rooms need to be cleared. You know, stuff has to be removed. And if walls have some cracks, they need to be repaired. And some of our walls may need to be removed totally because we might have walls up in our lives for different reasons. And, um, and some walls need to be extended. Like a house, it's just going to, it's, it will never be the same again. Hallelujah. And we're never to be the same. We're not going back to the old life. God's called us to a new and living way. And it gets better and better. Hallelujah. Because a just path of just is a shining light that shines brighter and brighter every day. Hallelujah. And so when we get saved, we become God's dwelling place, his house. And I'll read it. Hebrews 3, 6. But Christ is a son over his own house. Whose house are we? If we hold fast the confidence and the rejoicing of hope firm to the end. So we always say it's not how you start the race. It's how you finish the race. But we are his house and he wants to do some renovating. Hallelujah, because we need renovating. God knows. And uh, God's house, individually, collectively, is undergoing renovation. Amen. And we're being renewed in our mind. So we will be transformed into spiritual maturity image of God. That's the plan, to be transformed into the spiritual maturity of Almighty God. Hallelujah. It's a process that occurs from the inside and then shows itself on the outside. And God is doing it. And God's word, what does God, how does God do it? God uses his word by his Holy Spirit. 
And God's word is a seed and it goes into our heart. That's where the seed goes. It goes into the ground. The ground is a heart. We're made of the dust of the earth. And our born again spirit becomes, oh, sorry, our born again spirit, it welcomes the word of God and it believes it. Our spirit, once it's alive, it's gone. Oh, give me this. It loves the word. It can't get enough. It loves God's presence. It, it just loves everything to do with the things of God. And so we receive our, the word of God into our spirit, but not into our mind. Our spirit was made new, but our mind is to be renewed. And that's a process. So in our soul, which is our mind and will or emotion, it needs to be renewed because our mind is still operating in natural things. And those natural things, our natural way of doing things, thinking things, purposing things, planning things, they can block, they can block, our thinking can block the word of God transforming, renewing our life. And we want God's word to have free course in our heart and life. Hallelujah. And we need to understand that our soul can overwhelm our spiritual man. You know, our spiritual man might think, oh, yes, that's for me. But our natural man will go, no, that's not for you. A natural man can try and talk us out of things because of its past experience. But let's turn to 1 Corinthians 12, and this will make it a bit easier for us to understand. 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and verse 14. Sorry, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 14. But the natural man receives not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. Amplified reads, But the natural, non-spiritual man does not accept or welcome or admit into his heart the gifts and teachings and revelations of the Spirit of God. For they are folly, meaningless nonsense to him, and he is incapable of knowing them, of progressively recognizing, understanding, and becoming better acquainted with them because they are spiritually discerned and estimated and appreciated. So the natural man can't understand spiritual things. He can't. He's not meant to. He can't. And so that's why we need to be born again. That's why we were born again. So that God can take us from the natural and bring us right up into his spiritual realm and start operating in the realm that he would have us to be. So to understand spiritual matters, we need a revelation. We need a revelation. And revelation is received into our spirit. That's where it goes. It goes straight into our spirit. And this then starts the process of renewing our mind. And our minds need to be renewed so that we will believe the word of God. Our spirit just accepts it because spirit talks to spirit. But our natural man, <laughs> our saved natural man even, our soul realm needs to be renewed. And so it will believe the word of God and not just our spirit believing. God wants our soul to believe it too. Hallelujah. So just as our words are powerful in life, you know, our words are powerful, life and death, we know that, so are our thoughts powerful. Our thoughts are very powerful. And uh, let's turn to Proverbs 23. Not only do words paint pictures, thoughts paint pictures. Proverbs 23 and verse 7. And it says, for as he thinks in his heart, so is he. As he thinks in his heart, so is he. As he thinks in his heart, so is he. So what thoughts do we have going on inside? Are they thoughts that agree with the word of God? Or are they thoughts that are yet to be renewed to the word of God? When we allow God's word to adjust our thoughts, our lives will be changed and transformed. Just like the caterpillar to the butterfly. God wants to change us from how we first come to him into the wonderful plan and image that he has for us. 
Now, for example, our spirit may receive a revelation and understanding about a particular healing scripture. Right, let's use that one for an easy one. A healing scripture. You go, oh, there's a wonderful healing scripture. Oh, that's really good. But our mind may reject the revelation because it hasn't been renewed. The soul realm operates in the sense realm, seeing, tasting, feeling. That's how our soul operates. And our mind says, if it can't see the healing or if it can't feel any different operating in the sense realm, then nothing happened. But that's not what the word of God says. But our soul can talk us out of things and, um, and say, oh, nothing happened. Look, nothing happened. But God's word says in 2 Corinthians 5, 7, we walk, not by, we walk by faith, not by sight. So our spiritual man is operating in faith. But our soul man, he's operating in the sense realm. And so our soul man, he has to be renewed to the word of God. And so you can't have your spirit and your soul going in two different directions. God wants them to come and be one. Be one. God blesses unity. So you've got to have unity on the inside. But it's a process, all right? And... Um, and God's helping us with this. He's, really, he's given us his word. Another example is our spirit may receive a revelation or an understanding about a particular scripture, but it's our mind, once again, our soul that rejects the revelation because it's not yet been renewed. The doubt, the fear, the unbelief that reside in our unrenewed mind, in our unrenewed soul, endeavor to reign and rule over our spirit. Did we get that? The doubt, the fear, and the unbelief comes from our soul realm. It's not coming from our spirit. Our spirit is alive unto God. But the doubt, the fear, and the unbelief is in our soul realm. Another example is that the word, when we receive the word into our heart, um, when we receive the word into our heart, we will renew our thinking. Right? When we receive the word into our heart through the word of God, our thinking will change regarding poverty and lack. Some people have a poverty mentality. That's all they've known all their life. Some people have a lack mentality. That's all they've known all their life. And God wants to transform it, translate it, renew it into God's mentality. And so we understand that it's God's will to take care of us. Heaven is not lacking anything. Heaven has abundance. It's all there. And our natural man, our soul, our, our unrenewed mind needs to align itself to the word of God. It's a process. So, both, all right, so our spirit um, may respond to God in any given situation. You know, our spirit just, oh, I'll take that, I'll have that. But our unrenewed mind will try to talk it talk us out of it he might say things like well that's impossible <laughs> god wouldn't do that for you who do you think you are well that'll never happen for you look at your family look at your what's happened in your past look at your history look at all that well it doesn't matter what happened in your past in your history because once it's under the blood it no longer exists it no longer exists so it doesn't have any value it doesn't have any say and we have to really settle that in our heart. Our past is under the blood. So it's not to speak to us anymore. It's behind us. We can't go back to the past. You know you can't go back to the past? It's because it's behind you. God is always taking us forward in him. Hallelujah. And uh, both our spirit and our soul need to come into agreement with the word of God. The word of God. So as our thinking is changed to agree with the word of God, we also will change. As our thinking agrees with the word of God, we will change. I remember when I first got born in Ken, I mean, my, I just came alive. I was going, I had, a real I had a real transformation. I was going one direction, I got saved, and I was going a different direction. My whole life changed, things dropped off, renovation, delight. <laughs> just everything happened. Change, boom, change. People just couldn't recognize me as the same person. The transformation in my spirit was so enormous. 
And God does that for each one. And we can't compare ourselves with anybody else because God knows exactly what he's doing in each heart and each life. All right, but I was just saying for my example. And then as Romans, Romans 12, I had to learn, offer myself as a living sacrifice and be transformed, learn God's ways, all scripture is profitable, learn God's ways. And so changing me from the inside out from glory to glory. Hallelujah. And that's what he wants to do for his whole church. Hallelujah. So God is changing us from, hear it, a grasshopper mentality to, like what Caleb said, let us go up at once and possess it, for we are well able to overcome it. We can stay in grasshopper if we want to. God won't force anything on us. And the children of Israel and those with the grasshopper missed out on everything. They never made it to the promised land because they just saw some giants. Right. But they they didn't. Joshua and Caleb, you know, they brought back the fruit and it was huge fruit so that people get a glimpse how good this fruit is. This promised land is so good. It's worth going after. It's worth having. And but the majority, the other 10 spies said, no, no, we can't do that because there's giants. There's giants. There's. Now, there may be giants in the land, in our land, in our life. There may be giants. For example, and I just wrote these down, fearites. Fear will keep a person absolutely locked in, bound, just imprisoned. Uh, small mindedites, just me, myself, and I. Don't worry about the whole rest of the world. It's just going down the tube. We're not to be. God gave His Son for this whole world. We have to get our vision up where God is. And we're meant to be seated in heavenly places. Um, we might have the lackites. Lack, lackites. Oh, I couldn't do that because, oh, oh, I mean, I couldn't, you know, God always promised he would give seed to a sower. God always promised to give seed to a sower. So lackites, doubtites. Oh, I doubt about that. I doubt that could ever happen for me. That could never happen in my life. It might happen for other people, but it could never happen for me. A doubtite. Don't believe it. Uh, because God's on our side. And Joshua and Caleb, they just went through because jo they knew God was with them and God had promised them lots of things. And so with God on their side, they went forward. Hallelujah. And Jesus said in Matthew 19, 26, with God, all things are possible. All is all. Not just some things. All things are possible. And so God's wanting us to renew our mind to what he says in the word. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I am responsible for my mind. No one else. You can't change my mind. You might try and talk me into things. But I'm responsible for the stewardship of my mind. What's going on in here or in here in the, in the heart of man? I am responsible for my mind. And I need to be good, a good steward. No one else can do it for me. And uh, let's turn to Proverbs chapter 4 and verse 23. And it reads, Keep your heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. And the Amplified says, Keep and guard your heart with all vigilance and above all that you guard, for out of it flow the springs of life. So what we think in our hearts, we will speak. And if we are considering fear and doubt and unbelief and lack and victim stuff, that's what will be in our life. Because as a man thinks in his heart, as a man thinks, so shall he be. So if we're thinking like that, that's what's going to be surrounding our life. So we need to transform our thinking to agree with the word of God. So we know our words are powerful and thoughts are also powerful. And, um, and thoughts that are powerful can pe keep people imprisoned in a situation. Because they, it's just they've got this, they've always got this thinking going on. It can keep them imprisoned um, to a situation, to the past to a circumstance, even facts. Facts, all right, the facts might be this, but the truth is the word of God. And we have to agree with the word of God. 
not the facts, not what other people say, not the situation, not the past, not what's gone down. Just we need to agree with the word of God. So what do we need to do? We need to take captive, take prisoner every thought that doesn't line up with the word of God. Remember I said before, we're a steward of our own mind. We actually have to do that. That's something we have to do. It said, be you transformed. We have to do that. If we've got things hitting us in our mind, doesn't agree with the word of God from either they, they might be fiery darts from the enemy or they might be the unrenewed soul in us that we have to take every thought captive that doesn't line up with the word of God. We don't just let them blab, 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 blab on. No, we don't do that. Jesus bore everything on the cross, everything on the cross, including our thoughts, everything, just so we are not a victim. We are victorious through him. We're not the victim anymore. We may have been through different situations in our life, but Jesus Christ put the line in the sand, the cross put the line in the sand. We are no longer a victim. We're no longer, it doesn't matter what's gone down in your past, the blood, the cross puts the line in the sand and we need to put a line in the sand. And if stuff keeps trying to come back into our, from our past, to if you just put the line and say, no, Jesus died, I'm set free from that. I'm not having that. That's past. It's under the blood. God's forgiven me. It's gone down. I forgave them. It's finished. It's finished. When Jesus said it's finished, it's finished. And we need to have that same attitude in our life when we have other thoughts that don't agree with the word of God. It's finished. I'm not going there anymore. I'm not even going to waste my time thinking about that anymore. Take no thought. <laughs> Let's not even dwell on anything that doesn't agree with the word of God. Let's just let it go. Right? Just let it go. So we're not a victim. We are victorious in him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Second Corinthians chapter 10. Hallelujah. Second Corinthians chapter 10. You know, God is very practical. He didn't, he didn't just say, oh, do your best or have a go at it. He gave us the instruction book. This is the manual for life. The Bible is the manual for life. So Second Corinthians chapter 10, verse 4 and 5. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Cast, verse 5, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought, every thought to the obedience of Christ. Some thinking has developed into a stronghold. It's almost impenetrable because they're thinking day in, day out, day in, day out. Maybe it's gone on for years. You know, people watching YouTube, maybe you've had things that have gone on for years. But God's word is more powerful than those strongholds. God's word is all power. God is all powerful. And God is his word. Hallelujah. The Amplified reads, for the weapons of our warfare are not physical. They're, they're not weapons of flesh and blood, but they are mighty before God for the overthrow and, oh, listen to it, the overthrow and the destruction of strongholds. Overthrow and destruction. If, you th if, if it's an overthrow, it's squashed. And if it's destroyed, that's destruction. It's destroyed. It no longer exists. Finished. Done. Verse 5. Inasmuch as we refute arguments and theories and reasonings and every proud and lofty thing that sets itself up, the true, up against the true knowledge of God and we lead every thought and purpose away captive into the obedience of Christ, the Messiah, the anointed one. So any arguments and reasonings and thinking about this and what about this and rolling those all the way round and round and round as if that's going to make any difference. God operates on faith. He doesn't op operate on arguments and theories and reasoning and prideful things and lofty things and things that don't agree with the word of God. 
God can't agree with stuff that doesn't come in out of his word. He can't come into agreement with it. So we shouldn't either. <laughs> um, and so God's word is so powerful. And Jesus has overthrown and destroyed every stronghold. If we'll believe it. Jesus has overthrown and destroyed every stronghold. We just need to believe God's word and not the thoughts that may come into our mind. Right? Just leave them destroyed, overthrown, gone, down, squashed, behind, under the blood. Hallelujah. Under our feet. All right. For example, what if a large dog was trying to jump up on you? A large dog was trying to jump up on you. What do you do? You know, I've got a lot, you've got a large dog coming to you and it's going to jump up on you. You know, for me, you know, try and bowl me over. What do you do? You can say, get down off me. Get down off me. And you might even put your hand, get, push him away. Get down off me. Right? He's trying to have his way. He's trying to overthrow you. He's trying to destroy you. He might even try and bite you. He's trying to get you, this big dog. But you're going to say, get down. Get away from me. Right? So any thought that doesn't line up with the word of God, don't believe it. Cast it down. Just like the dog, tell it to get off. You get, tell it to get off. God expects you to stand up and take some action. Take some fortitude and stand up. You know, don't let the little dog or the big dog walk all over you. You tell him where to get off. In love. Dog, God created the animals. I love dogs. But if they're being naughty and misbehaving, then I will step up and tell it where to get off. All right? So, um, yes, yes. And um, yes. Anyway, I, I'll just give you an example. We have um, birds come to our house regularly, every day, multiple times during the day. And they come with an expectation that I'll feed them. And I do. But there's some other birds. Uh, we have doves. Doves? I have doves. They're very gentle. They're the most gentle bird I've ever come across. They are so timid. And we are meant to be, you know, the Holy Spirit is gentle like a dove. They are so timid. And uh, they're not out for a fight. They're not out for anything. They're so timid. Even if I walk out and I feed them every day, multiple times during the day, and they still will run away from me. They are so timid. But there's another little bird in the area. And he's a nasty little bird. I don't know why God has him on the planet. He must serve some purpose yet to be revealed to me. And he will try and bully, him, bully the dove away from his food. And this little bird, I tell you, he's, he's a smaller bird than the dove, but he's so at him, at him to try and intimidate him. He's at him and at him. Well, I'll normally go out and tell the other little bird, get off. Leave him alone. Get, I will tell him, get out of here. Get off. And I'll show him. I'll show him. But you know what's happened? I keep doing that. But you know what now the dove does? He just flexes his wings a bit now when that little bird comes around. I don't know if I've empowered him or what, but he starts to flex his wings. And that bird doesn't get away with nearly what he does used to get away with. The dove, who's the most timid bird I've ever met, he's now flexing his wings when other birds are trying to take his food. And he never used to do that. So... A dove can change. So this dove has changed. And so from glory to glory, we can change, right? And stand up on the inside. Don't get bowled over by all the rubbish that goes on around about us. Hallelujah. So let's uh, turn to James chapter 1. And verse 22. And it reads, but be you doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. Right? Doers of the word, not just hearing. You know, we can be sitting in church and sitting in church or reading and reading and reading. But we have to be doers of the word. Because if we're not, it says we're just deceiving our own selves. You know, you're just playing around, really. 23, for if any be a hearer of the word and not a doer, He's like a man beholding his natural face in a glass or a mirror. 
For he beholds himself and goes his way and straightway forgets what manner of man he was. But whoso looks into the perfect law of liberty, that's the word of God, and continues therein. So you don't just read it once in your life. You continue to read the word of God. He being not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, this man shall be blessed in his deed. Okay. A mirror allows us to see where we've missed something. For example, for example, you know, something stuck in my tooth or a hair out of place. That's what a mirror does. And, uh, and so we make those adjustments, right? No one else can make those adjustments for us. It's my tooth. It's my hair, right? But we make those adjustments. We are doing something about it. And regarding to mirrors, regarding mirrors, I've been to theme parks where they had these really big mirrors and um, they had various kinds of mirrors and they made you look thin or tall or wide. They were really, f like, I, I guess they're quite funny. But if you wanted to be tall, if you wanted to be wide or if you wanted to be thin, maybe. But those mirrors gave a distorted image. They weren't true. They gave a distorted image. And our thought life, listen, our thought life can give us a distorted image which will affect our present condition and our future condition. Our thought life can give us a distorted image. God has an image of us. He created us in his image and God knows what he's doing. He knows exactly what he's doing and we are created in his image. But if we just remain unrenewed in our thought life, we will have, it will be, cause a distortion. And it's going to affect our life now and our life tomorrow. So God wants to change that distortion, make that, you know, allow, we need to allow him to adjust us through the word so that our image gets transformed, like we read in Romans 12, into the image be you new, renewed, transformed, the renewing of your mind, so that we, we align ourselves to God's image, which is in the book. And God's word is the true mirror. This is the mirror, the truth, which shows us where we need to make adjustments. Like some adjustments can be just our attitudes, our thinking, the way we go about things, uh, from all manner of things. You know, the holy, the word is alive it's a living word and it will speak to us and it will gently prick or point out things to us where we may need adjustment he, god's very gentle holy spirit's very gentle and he doesn't give up with us and if we fall over we just get up again repent and get up again we don't quit we don't quit god doesn't quit on us so we shouldn't quit on us all right galatians chapter 3 And verse 13, and it reads, Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, being a made a curse for us, for it is written, cursed is every man that hangs on the tree. The Amplified reads, Christ purchased, listen to it, Christ purchased our freedom, redeeming us from the curse, doom of the law, and its condemnation by himself becoming a curse for us, for it's written in the scriptures, cursed is everyone who hangs on a tree meaning Jesus was crucified. On the cross, Jesus bore every curse, every sickness, every disease, every lack, every bondage, every poverty, every situation, just so we can be free, well and whole. I'll say it again. On the cross, Jesus bore every curse, Every sickness, every disease, every lack, every bondage, every poverty, every situation, every distorted thought, just so we can be free, well and whole. He paid the price with his life just so that we can embrace the life that God meant for us. Let's turn to John 8, verse 32. 
And this is what Jesus said. And you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. What's the truth? God's word is the truth. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth and the life. Jesus is the word. So the truth is the word. And the truth is what sets us free. It's the truth that's going to make adjustments in our mind, that our mind is getting renewed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's um, turn back to Luke chapter 4. We need God's truth. We need much more and more and more. And Luke chapter 4, verse 18. And it says, The Spirit, this is Jesus. You know, he went into the uh, synagogue on the Sabbath and he stood up, verse 18, this, and he read from the book of Isaiah, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Do you know the Spirit of the Lord's upon you as well? You're filled with the Holy Spirit. So this is what you're anointed for. Spirit of the Lord is upon me to preach the gospel, the good news. People don't have to be destroyed anymore. They don't have to go to a fiery hell. They can go to heaven. Hallelujah. They don't have to be sick. They don't have to be poor. They don't have to, you know, live in the, the, the fear and the doubt and the unbelief and the loneliness and the emptiness anymore. He preached the gospel. It's good news to the poor. All right. Well, good news to a poor person is you don't have to be poor anymore. That's pretty good news, don't you think? He sent me to heal the brokenhearted. So much you know, brokenness in people's lives and families and relationships to preach deliverance to the captives, whatever is captivating you, whether it's spiritual or mindsets or strongholds, deliverance to the captives, whatever's keeping people in bondage. He's come to fix that. The anointing does that. The recovering of sight to the blind, like that can be natural blindness or spiritual blindness, right? Uh, to set at liberty them that are bruised, to set at liberty. That means to give them freedom, to give them deliverance, to set them free. Hallelujah. Verse 19, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. I'm going to read on. And he closed the book and gave it again to the minister and he sat down and the eyes of all them that were in the synagogue were fastened on him. And he began to say unto them, here it is, this day is this scripture fulfilled in your ears. This day, tonight, is this scripture fulfilled in your ears. No more brokenness. No more bondage. No more sickness. No more Im uh, imprisonment. No more bondage. He came to fulfill the word of God. He redeemed us from all of that. Hallelujah. So we are totally healed, according to that. And this is what we need to do. Our mind, we get it in our spirit, but our mind needs to read that word of God and agree with it. Not fight us over it. It has to agree with it. This word says that we are already healed. And we're totally free now because it's already fulfilled. Jesus fulfilled it. He already fulfilled it. It's like by Jesus' stripes you were healed. It's past tense. It's been fulfilled. The outworking in our life may still need manifestation, but the word is already fulfilled. And so God's going to transform us from whatever might be our current situation into the fullness of what he's paid the price for. Hallelujah. That's pretty exciting, don't you think? That's what he's doing. And he's doing it. He's doing it by his word and by his spirit. But we have a part to play. We need to be, as I said, good stewards of our minds, of our thoughts. And only if they don't agree with the word of God, don't take them on board. You get the word out or you start speaking the word. Jesus spoke the word. You know, the devil accused all sorts of things to him. And he just answered with the word. Hallelujah. And, um, and so we need to take action and answer. Um, no, I'll just go back here. So we're totally healed and totally free now. Why? Because God's word says so. So we need to believe God's word. We need to declare God's word. And we need to think God's words. Believe it. 
declare it and think it. I know it's easier to say, but it's a process, all right? And so when we comply and yield to the, to the Word and the Holy Spirit, He's going to help us. The Holy Spirit's there to help us. He wants to help us in the transformation. We're not trying to do it in our own strength, but we do need to be willing. We do need to be willing. Lord, I want, you said I could, this is for me. I, you said I'm totally healed. You said my heart is healed. Well, I choose to believe your word. Lord, you said I've been set free from the past. I've been set free from spiritual st stuff. I'm set free. Your word says I'm set free. So I choose to believe your word. I choose to believe your word. So we need to take action and answer any unrenewed thoughts with the word of God. We can do something about this, not in, not in our own strength, but we just step up. We step up. Come on, we can step up just like that dog. Get off. I'm not having that anymore. No, I'm not going down that path anymore. I'm not, I've had enough of that. I've gone around this mountain too many times. And I'm not going around anymore. Put the line in the sand and we go forward with God's help. And um, we just read back in James chapter one there. Uh, the man who's a doer of the work, this man shall be blessed in his deed. So God blesses obedience to his word. So when we obey God's word, there's blessing follows. When we obey God's word, blessing will follow. And uh, I'm just going to read that James 1 in the Amplified because it opens it up a bit further. But B, it's James chapter 1. I'll just go back to it. It's James chapter 1. And it's... Uh, Verse 1, chapter 1, verses 22 to 25. But be you doers of the word. Obey the message. Huh, how, simple, how clear is that? Obey the message and not merely listeners to it, betraying yourselves into deception by reasoning contrary to the truth. For if anyone only listens to the word without obeying it and being a doer of it, he is like a man who looks carefully at his own natural face in a mirror. For he thoughtfully observes himself and then goes off and promptly forgets what he was like. But he who looks carefully into the faultless law, this is faultless. Remember, he wants to present us faultless, blameless. This is the faultless law, the law of liberty, and is faithful to it. Not just a hit and miss thing, faithful to it and perseveres in looking into it. So it's not just you know, once in a blue moon, we look persevering, looking into it, being not a, a heedless listener who forgets, but an active doer who obeys. He, so he, when he obeys, he shall be blessed in his doing his life of obedience. So who wants to be blessed? We are blessed, all right? But there's more blessing available <laughs> to be received, hallelujah. And, um, and so in the natural, all right, how often do we look in a mirror? In the natural, how often do we look in the mirror? Probably every morning, maybe at least once a day, maybe multiple times a day during the day. Uh, what about the word of God? We need to be believing it, speaking it and reading it frequently, right? It's the mirror. It's the mirror. All right, nearly done. Romans chapter 8, verse 37. Now, no matter what's going on, Romans 8, 37. So no matter what our situation is, Romans 8, 37, nay, which is no, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. We are more than conquerors through him that loved us. So no matter what's going on, the word of God says, I'm more than a conqueror. You're not going under because the word of God says you're a conqueror. That means you're over. You're the head, not the tail. You're above, not below. Hallelujah. You're more than a conqueror through him who loved us. God loves us so much. He's there cheering us on. So who loves us? God, through him that loved us. Who loves us? God and Jesus. Hallelujah. Let's turn to Ephesians chapter 1. I'll show you how loved you are. Ephesians chapter 1. 
We've got to believe this. This is what God, I mean, what else can God do? He's put it down in writing just so we can't misunderstand it. Or we're not making it up. He's made it really clear. There's no ambiguity. Ephesians chapter one, according as he has chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. He chose us before the foundation of the world. That is a long time ago. God's had you on his heart for thousands of years. There's no surprises to him. There's none. He knew exactly what he was doing when he chose you. It says he chose us. We think, oh, yeah, we gave our life and we made the decision. Actually, he led us into a place where it says the goodness of God leads us to repentance. It's his goodness to us that he chose us in him before the foundation of the world. The Amplified says, even as in his love, he chose us. He actually picked us out for himself as his own in Christ before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy, consecrated and set apart for him, that we should for him and blameless in his sight, even above reproach before him in love to be blameless in his sight. We read that. And so we're going to go back to it. Romans chapter 12, blameless in his sight. He chose us. That's what his plan is. Absolutely complete, whole. Romans chapter 1, sorry, chapter 12, verse 1. And we read, And I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice. Now, just, I'll just stop there for a second. We said at the beginning we were spirit, soul, and body. So our spirit is saved. Our soul is being renewed. But our body needs to line up with the word of God. It needs to obey us when it needs to be in the prayer meeting. It needs to be in the prayer meeting. When it needs to be um, resting, it needs to be resting. <laughs> when it needs to be um, healed and whole, it needs to be healed and whole. All right. He wants to do it in all three areas. So he wants us to present ourselves as a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable under God, which is your reasonable service. Amen. And verse two. And be not conformed to this world, but be you transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove that which is that what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. So every one of us is unique in God's eyes. Every single every person watching YouTube, you are so unique in God's eyes. You're your, your fingerprints. Everybody has a different set of fingerprints. There's nobody else like you on the planet. There's not meant to be anybody else like you on the planet. God has the plan for your life. So you don't have to be in anybody else's plan. You don't have to be anybody else. You just have to be you. That's the diversity of God. You don't have to compare yourself. You just got to be all that God wants you to be. And as you yield, that's just what he wants you to do. Hallelujah. And he's chosen each one of us for a special plan that nobody else can do but you. Because he's given us all different giftings, abilities. Ha, you know, we just, God's got everybody different. But together, collectively, it's absolutely amazing what, what God has in the body of Christ. The people he chooses, the diversity of talents, abilities, hearts, kindness. You know what he has chosen. It's amazing. So it's up to each one of us to allow God's word to renew our mind so that we can discover for ourselves what is God's good, acceptable and perfect will for our lives. Amen. I'll say it again. It's up to each one of us to allow God's word to renew our mind so we discover for ourselves what is God's good, acceptable and perfect will for our lives. Amen. So I'm just going to lead you on something here. Let us believe and declare some truths. So ready? We're going to say some things that agree with the word of God so that we're going to let them come out of our lips and our head's going to have to come into agreement with it and, um, and our words speak life. Amen. So please say after me, in God and with God's help, 
the word says. God loves me and is with me today. God has forgiven me of all things. I have faith. I am a new creation. So all old things are passed away. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I am loved by God. I am healed. I am set free. I'm blessed. I'm delivered. I'm happy. <laughs> I'm a conqueror. I can make decisions. I am victorious. I have the peace of God ruling in my heart and mind. I have no limitations with God in my life. I have an inheritance in God paid for by Jesus Christ. I walk in the favor of God. I have financial abundance because God is my source. I am an excellent and faithful sower and an excellent and faithful reaper. I hope you're all agreeing with all these in your heart. I have the mind of Christ. I have the wisdom of God. God is for me. God is working in my heart and life. God is leading and guiding me in all things. I choose to forgive everyone. I choose to forget the past. I can do what God says I can do. I can have what God says I can have. And the last one, I press towards the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah and amen. Thank you. God bless you.